Shalom, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Evelyn, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. How are you doing today? Thank you, family, for joining us. You're welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. How was the week? And happy new week to you all. Trust God, we had a great week last week. So for seven, every day you came, you came through for me. I had no essence, had no meaning, Lord. You showed up for me. What did I do to deserve this kind of love? What did I do to see that your right hand? What did I do to deserve this kind of love? Oh, oh, oh. oh is the Lamb who sits upon the throne worthy is the lamb who sits upon the throne two for seven every day you came you came through for me is that your testimony i had no essence had no meaning lord you showed up for me what did I do to deserve this kind of love? What did I do to see that you're right hand? What did I do to deserve this kind of love? Oh, oh. and worthy is the Lamb who sits upon the throne. Worthy is the Lamb who sits upon the throne. Obinigwe. Carol, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. You're all welcome. Good evening and happy new week to you. Please do leave a comment. Let's know who is joining us. Do leave a comment. Let's know who is joining us. I want to officially welcome you before we start, but in the meantime, you can start just thanking God for today. Thank God for the week. Thank God. Just begin to give him thanks. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this week. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you for this week that you've made for me to rejoice and be glad. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. Liana Barasubrahanda Larusha. 
Yana barasiana barusa prahanda kaya na manara sobran. Lize kabarusha handa balarasia. Yanda bara subranda la rosa. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this session. We thank you for the words you have for us in this session. We thank you, Lord, for everything you have in store for us in this session. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. Be thou exalted in our midst. Be thou magnified in our midst, Lord. We give you all the glory, Lord. We thank you in advance because we are confident that no one comes into your presence and lives the same way they came. So we know this is an opportunity for an encounter. This is an opportunity for a testimony. This is an opportunity for you to meet someone at the point of their need. So, Father, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you once more, family, for joining us. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, please help me with the scripture. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. Oh, prophetess Angie, happy new week to you. So glad to have you join us. Always a pleasure having you join us, woman of God. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. Can someone help me with the scripture? Just write it down for the sake of those coming. And then please, if you've not liked the video, do that for me. Oh, thank you, woman of God. Thank you. Two, four, seven. Every day you came. You came through for me. I had no essence. Had no meaning, Lord. You showed up for me. What did I do to deserve this kind of love? What did I do to sit at your right hand? What did I do to deserve this kind of love? Oh, what is the Lamb who sits upon the throne? And I sought for a man among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Did you hear that? It says, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Hallelujah. Oh, I came today with a word for someone. And God said, I should tell you, he desperately needs you. He desperately needs you. I say this over and over and I keep saying it, that I really don't like religion. Because religion paints a picture of God that is not the real picture. It makes us feel like God can't wait to punish us and send us to hell for the sins that we commit, for the mistakes that we make. It paints, it makes God not to look like a father, but it makes God look like a bad boss that is looking for an opportunity to fire you so he doesn't get to pay you. But that is not the truth. God says his greatest desire is that all should be saved and that none should be lost. 
That's why it doesn't matter how far the prodigal son drifts away from the house. The father is still anxiously waiting for him to come back home. It doesn't matter how messy your life has been. God is waiting to clean you up. God is waiting to receive you back. He is praying for you to, to realize that he's waiting for you, that he loves you even the way you are. The Bible says he loved us even when we were yet sinners. So his love for us is not dependent on anything that we did or anything that we are doing. He loved us because he's a loving father. That's why the angels will never understand why they say, who is man that, that thou art so mindful of? Or the son of man that you care so much about him. Because they will never understand that magnitude of love that God bestowed on man. But it's not for them to understand. We don't understand why, but he loves us. And he loves us that, that much. Are we following? Are we together? Come on, I need to feed from your energy. Mena Matt, thank you for joining us, Matt. Or is it Matty? Thank you for joining us, Mina. You're welcome. Come on, family, if you are just joining us, you might want to leave a comment. Let me give you a shout out. Oh, thank you, Lord. And God is telling us here, he says, I sought for a man to stand in the gap. My desire was not to destroy the land. My desire was not to destroy the people. But when I sought for a man, I found none. Here, Akita, thank you for joining us. Oh, from New Zealand, you're so welcome. Thank you for joining us. He says, I sought for a man, but I found none. I was looking for someone that I can use, someone that can. Oh, my father always says God's mechanism to function on the earth realm is man. So if you believe that God will do anything, you need no man in your life. God will do anything. You have God and you have all. God works through men. God will bless you through a man. God will help you through a man. God will uplift you through a man. God needs a man to pray for you. Sometimes you might not be able to pray for yourself, but someone else needs to pray for you. Because the, the Bible says the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has it given to the sons of men. So God will not do something for you, but except he uses another man. So God will need to use man for him to bless you the way he wants to bless you. For him to take you to where he wants to take you. For him to uplift you the way he wants to uplift you. God's mechanism on the earth is man. Because he has put man in charge. And this is God saying, I didn't really want to destroy the land. I wanted to preserve the land. And we see this practically happen in the book of Genesis. Shani, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. In the book of Genesis, there was a land called, the, 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 there was a place called Sodom. The, as, as a matter, it was Sodom and Gomorrah. And the level of iniquity in these two places it was so much that the cry went up to heaven like, these people are so ungodly, their level of iniquity is so much. And God dis decided he needed to destroy the land. And when God, as God set out with his angels on his way to go destroy the land, he gets to a point and is asking himself, should I go ahead and do this without telling Abraham, my friend? Should I go ahead and do this without revealing? it to my friend Abraham and guess what God was doing God was looking for someone to stand in the gap for, for, for Sodom and Gomorrah so that he doesn't get to destroy it God was looking for someone to stand in the gap so that he doesn't get 
get to destroy the land. And, and Abraham understood that and began to intercede and began to intercede. Unfortunately, he didn't intercede right to the list. He, 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 he got tired somewhere, somewhere, and he ended somewhere. But at least because of his intercession, the family of Lot was preserved. Lot and his family was preserved because he interceded. Had he not interceded, God would have destroyed the whole land. So don't tell me that God is looking for a way to destroy people. Don't tell me God wants to kill someone because they are a sinner. God wants everyone to repent. God wants to give someone an opportunity. God wants to give everyone the opportunity to make heaven. Jesus didn't come down to die for nothing. He didn't come to die just so that you end up still going to hell. So what was the essence of him dying? What was the essence of him giving up on his splendor? What was the essence of him leaving all his glory to come suffer and die a painful and a disgraceful death? That was because of how much he loves you. That was because of how much he loves you and I. That was because he loves us so much and he doesn't want to lose us. That's the reason why he came. That's the reason why God is searching for a man. That's the reason why God needs you to stand in the gap for someone. That's the reason why God needs you to talk to someone. In the Bible, in the book of Jonah, we read of another story. There was another land called Nineveh and the people had gone astray. The people did not fear God and the Bible says God sends Jonah to go to the, the land of Nineveh and warn the people that is about to destroy the land in 40 days and the Bible says Jonah refused to go. He said I know you. You are a merciful God. You are going to send me to that land and when I go give that they are going to repent and you will forgive them and I will look like the fake prophet. I'm not going. I'm not going. And Jonah, instead of going to, 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 to Nineveh, set out in the ship to go to Tashish. And on the way, God sent a storm to go to, 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 to stop him. And, and then he was casted into the sea. And, and God sent a fish to swallow him. That's how far God will go to deliver his people. That's how far God will go. Just so that he doesn't get to destroy his people. And the fish carried Jonah to Nineveh because God so wanted the idea was not to destroy Nineveh but the, the idea was so that Nineveh can be saved the idea was so that he can get to preserve the people God just wants you to live a better life God just wants you to align yourself with him God just wants you the best is yet to come. Thank you for joining us. God just wants you to align yourself with him. God just wants you to be in a place where he can bless you. And sometimes when you are not there, God oh God is actually weeping because you are not there. That's why God is in need of a man. He's in need of you and I. God is in desperate need because someone next to you, someone close to you is in pain. Someone close to you needs, some, needs to be saved. Someone needs to to, to be blessed and God is in need of a man. That's the reason why God needs someone to pray. That's the reason why God needs someone to stand in the gap. And guess what? It's getting better. It's getting better. Before I came here, God said he needs someone to give evidence to. He needs someone to use as evidence. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Someone help me write down the scriptures I'm mentioning. Acts chapter 1, Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 and verse 8. Jesus told the disciples, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. He says, then you will become my witnesses in, in, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Then you will become my witnesses. There is no witness without evidence. Oh, thank you, prophetess. There is no witness without evidence. A witness is a witness because they have evidence. God is looking for people that he can trust with the evidence that the world needs to know that God is a good God. God is looking for someone to trust with wealth so that he can get to, to, to prove to the world that indeed God blesses people. God can indeed bless.
bless you. God is looking for someone to trust. Oh, come on, woman of God. Prophetess Angie, God is looking for someone to trust with the anointing, to trust with power, so that he can show the world that all power still belongs to him. God is looking for someone to trust with the anointing, that you will be able to win millions for him to win millions of souls for him god is looking for someone to trust with evidence with the anointing to heal so that you can be able to be evidence to the world that god indeed is a healer god is looking for someone to trust with the miracle walking power so that you can be able to be to, to prove to the world that god indeed is still the god of miracles that god still does miracle god is looking he said i'm searching for a man I'm looking for a man. I'm looking for someone to stand in the gap. I'm looking for someone to carry my evidence. I'm looking for someone to prove to the world that indeed I still bless people. That true blessings come from me. I'm looking for someone to prove to the world that I can uplift you. I can take someone from nothing to something. I'm looking for someone that's God speaking through me and saying I'm looking for someone. The Bible says when the authorities listen to Peter and John and they realize that these men were on school. The Bible says, The Bible says they realized that these men had been with Jesus. They didn't need to be schooled. They didn't need to have PhDs. But by reason of their being with Jesus, when they spoke the kind of wisdom that they spoke, the authorities were marveled. God says, I, I am looking for someone to give wisdom to. That they, when they speak, the world is going to be marveled. I'm looking for someone to, 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 to fill in with my wisdom. I'm looking for someone to bless, to bless, to give, to, to make a financial kingdom giant. So that the world will know that by their strength they cannot prevail. But if they can trust me and follow my principles, then they can become the best of what they have always dreamed to be or what they have worked so hard to be. I'm looking for someone to give evidence to. God doesn't want you to just go preach an empty gospel. God wants you to preach the gospel with evidence. Oh, la ziba yana barasiana. Apostle Paul says this is the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. God is looking for someone. That's why Jesus says you receive power. You receive power. And that power comes to you with an evidence so that you can witness because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Come on, who am I talking to? The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. God wants to empower you so that you can be able to prove to the world that God is a good God. God wants to empower you so that you can be able to prove to the world that God is a faithful God. God wants to empower you so that you can prove to the world that you might not be learned, you might not be educated, but if you can tell with God. God can make something out of your life. Oh, Laziana Barasiana. God wants to prove to someone that he can pick you from nowhere and put you somewhere. He can take a non-entity and place you into the in the palace. God wants to show you Esther. God wants to use you Esther to prove to the world that you might have been born and you grew up as an orphan and you grew up knowing no one with no one to help you. But God wants to show you that he can still pick you from the slums and pick you from that pit and put you in the palace and make you a queen and make you a deliverer of the world or of God's people. God wants to use someone. God wants to show you, oh David. God wants to use you to show the world, to prove the world that you might have. Uh, the circumstances surrounding your birth, they don't matter. Yes, David, you said you were, you, you were born. You were conceived in iniquity. It doesn't matter how you were born. It doesn't matter if you are a product of rape. It doesn't matter if you, if you are a product of an untimely affair. It doesn't matter if you were a product of a failed affair. It doesn't matter how you were born. It doesn't matter if you were rejected even by your own father, David. It doesn't matter if your brothers, if they forgot about you, if they rejected you. God says he wants to use you to prove to the world that he can take you from the bush where you have been relegated and you were not considered a son in the family. And he empowers you and makes you a king. Oh, la Shaka. And God is saying, I should take 
tell someone it's not about your righteousness it's not about you always being right no david sometimes you might find yourself falling sometimes you might find yourself in error sometimes yes say there is a day that even the king is weak even the warrior king is weak and doesn't feel as to go for battle and finds himself with Bathsheba and ends up killing but if only you can be the man after my heart and you understand what it means to cry out to God and say father I am sorry I messed up I messed up I messed up, but please forgive me. Give me one more chance. God says he will still use you the way you are. With those weaknesses, he will still use you the way you are. Yes, he is ready to clean up the mess and still use you. Come on, Joseph, you are so jealous by your own brothers that they want to kill you. They want to send you away, but God says he is going to have to use you. He's looking for someone to use. And he will use you to prove to the world that it doesn't matter whether you were loved in your family, even whether you were sold as a slave, whether you have been toiling all your life like a slave, working for people, just trusting God for what to eat. God says he can take you and make you a prime minister in a country that is not even your own and make you a father to the Pharaoh and, 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 and lord over the whole nation in a country that is not your own. What is it that is too hard for this God to do? Oh, What is it that is too hard for our God to do? What is it God wants to make a wonder out of your life? He says he's sorting for a man. God, God is looking for a man that he can bless. God is looking for a man. Oh, prophetess and you, God is looking for a voice to, to amplify. God is looking for a voice to rise up from nowhere. And people are going to say, we didn't know there was still a Captain Kuma in this generation. We didn't know there was still, there was still an Esther in this generation. We didn't know there was a Deborah. We didn't know there was an Elijah. God is looking for someone to pick out of nowhere and put on a platform on the world's platform and amplify their voice so far and, 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 and knowing them so much that when you stretch out your hands things begin to happen that are beyond your own imagination and everyone that sees you everyone that listens to you says this can only be God because when you open come on the Holy Spirit just told me God is looking for someone to be his mouthpiece come on oh father use me use me I receive this one for myself God is looking for someone to be his mouthpiece. Oh, Father, use me as your mouthpiece. Kaya nabalara haya nabara sobrahanda. La zika barua shaha naha naha la rua raha. Zibarua na kaya na kalarua shakaliara swa. Oh, zibara sabrahanda raswana. The world is depreciating and going. Things are getting so bad. Things are getting so bad. And every day you read. Realize that the main that oh the harvest is so wide, but the problem is the laborers, and God is looking for anyone that can avail themselves. Looking for every you don't need to be qualified, he's the one that qualifies the vessel. You don't need to have any background, he doesn't need it. He's just looking. Looking for someone to say, God, I'm here. God, use me. He's looking for someone that wants to come to him beyond just looking for blessings, beyond just looking for marriage. And because God is saying marriage and blessings are fringe benefits. If you work with me, you are going to get all of it. You are going to get all of it, but there is something more. I want to make something great out of your life. I want to transform your life. It doesn't matter, Jabez, whether you are, you are, your mother called you sorrow or pain giver because she bore you with pain. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Either name has had an, a negative effect on you. God wants to expand your coast and give you a name. God wants to enlarge you. God wants to use someone. God is looking for a ready vessel. And the challenge that God faces most of the time is that we come to him only asking, Father, give me, give me, Father, give me wealth, Father, give me this. And God is saying, I don't want to give you wealth. I want to make you, I don't want to give you, I want to make you a kingdom financial giant. Because when you are saying give me, you are telling God it's about me. I'm looking for a way out for myself. It's about me. 
I'm looking for a solution for myself. I'm taking, I want to take care of my family. God, give me my marriage. God wants to make you a model kingdom. God wants to make you a model when it comes to kingdom marriages. So that when people look at you, they understand what God intended for marriage to be. But when you come to God with the give me, Father, give me healing. And God, say, God is saying, I want to use the pain you've been. And when you understand what it means to go through pain, I want to use, take advantage of the affliction and make you a, 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 do what it means to be in pain. So when someone comes and says, I'm sick, you will have the compassion to heal them. So I want to, I want to bestow on you the healing anointing. God is looking for a man who will go beyond saying, God, give me. To say, God, make me. Make something out of my life. Make me a voice. I don't want to be just influential. I want to make impact. Use me to impact the world. God is looking for someone to use as his mouthpiece. God is looking for you and I, as powerful as he is, almighty, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience, all sovereign God. But he says, I sought for a man to stand in the gap so that I don't get to destroy the land, but I found none. With everything that is going on in the world today, God doesn't want people to perish. But he is looking for someone to tell him, please, I'm standing in the gap. Do not destroy the land. At the end of the day, when Jonah went to Nineveh, the people repented and God forgave them. So Jonah was right. He understood the nature of God. He was just so mindful of his own self, like they are going to call him a false prophet. But God's intention was never to destroy. People are drifting away from God because they want to hustle. People are going in, following the devil, selling their souls to the devil because they want to make it. God wants to use you to bless you with finances so that you can be an evidence to the world that you can hustle, can hustle but still put God first. You can hustle but still put God first. You can hustle but still put God first. God can make a wonder out of your life. I don't know what you've been trusting God for, but God says I should tell someone there is more. There is more he wants to make out of your life. There is more. God says I should tell you there is more. I know you are trusting him. Just so that he can bless you. God says he, he wants to make you a blessing. I know you are trusting him just for marriage. But God says he wants to make you a kingdom model marriage. A kingdom marriage model. Oh, prophetess Angie, you might never understand what God wants to make out of your life. But God wants to use you to prove to the world that the woman still has a place. That the woman still has a place in ministry. That he wants to use women in this dispensation more than ever before. I remember one day after I had preached like this, someone came and commented under the, you know, people can be mean sometimes. And sometimes I don't understand why man is so mean. And one man came and, and, and commented under the live session, after the session says, but you know that the woman is not supposed to preach, right? Say so women were given the platform to preach the gospel by doctrines. 
the woman is not supposed to preach. You don't have the right to preach. And when I saw that, I was like, seriously, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Who anointed me? Who is using me? And I just couldn't, couldn't help but be sarcastic to him. I, I was like, oh my God, I didn't know I didn't have the right to be preached. To, to preach. I didn't know God did not call me. So who has been using me all this way? I was like, oh my God, thank you so much for the enlightenment. Let me go and tell God I'm sorry for preaching his gospel without his knowledge. I will repent and denounce the call. Like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? When you read the Bible, you've got to read the Bible in context. But what I was saying is God wants to use you to prove to the world that he didn't end in the era of Catherine Coleman. God wants to use you to prove to the world that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former, that the anointing he's pouring for now is greater than the former. Do I have people that want that are saying, God, I'm available? Do I have anyone telling, telling God that is saying, God, I'm available, use me? Father, use me as evidence. Use me to be a voice, amplify my voice. Use me, Lord, as my mouthpiece. If you, if, 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 if you are available, then just begin to write it out. And tell God, Father, use me. Use me as your mouthpiece. Use me to preach your gospel. I don't know which aspect you desire. Oh. Come on, Caroline. You know, you know. It was women who were first to announce the resurrection of Jesus. What are they talking about? The men were not, did not even believe them. It was a woman that anointed the body of Christ. The anointing for the, the body of Jesus needed to be resurrected was put in a woman. A woman that was called, that was called names, was called a sinner, was called prostitute. She came in, poured oil on the feet of Jesus, and they said, Jesus should send her away. And Jesus says, no, this woman is anointing my body. In preparation for my burial. The anointing that the body of Jesus needed for, for to be able to resurrect was embedded, was, was given to a woman. Don't you ever let someone make you feel little. Tell him, tell him I don't know the aspect that you desire. Say, Father, use me as evidence to be a financial, a kingdom financial giant. Lord, use me as evidence to be a voice that will carry your gospel to the ends of the earth. Yes, prophetess Angie. Yes, he's looking for someone like you. Oh, Lazi Barasiana. Be specific in your request right now because God is here. Be specific in your request. If you feel like God has bestowed you with marriage counseling kind of wisdom, then you are going to say, Father, use me. Use my marriage. Use me. Give me a marriage that will be a model kingdom marriage so that I can be able to prove to the world that marriage is still work. If you need healing, tell God, use me to prove to the world, you restore your healing anointing on me. If you are at the place where you need the favor of God, tell God, use me. Give me favor with you and with man so I can be evidence to the world that God indeed, people still survive by favor. Father, use me. Johan, you're welcome. Father, use me. Kayana Barasiana. I surrender all to you, everything I give to you, withholding nothing, with
it's holding nothing. Lord, I surrender all unto you. Everything we give to you. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, so we give ourselves away. We give ourselves away, so you can use us. We give ourselves away. As I'm singing, if you have your offering, if you have your seed, it's the right time for you to cast it. Oh, we give ourselves away so you can use us. The cash or paper are in the description box. And then there is super chat, super thanks, super sticker. Lord, we surrender all unto you. Everything, Lord, we give unto you. And we withhold nothing. We withhold nothing. We give ourselves away. We give ourselves away so you can use us. And I say yes. Is that the cry of someone today? Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Don't know about you, but I say yes. Yes. Yes, Lord, yes, to do your will, Lord, I say yes, to be an evidence, yes, yes, Lord, yes. Someone, God, is connecting you to your seed, and God is making you a voice. God is announcing your ministry to the world to the world and god will use you to do impact to make impact to make exploits to do exploits sorry in the world someone connecting you to your seed god says is making you a financial giant god says someone connecting you to your seed god is bestowing the anointing upon you. The anointing for wealth creation, the anointing for healing, the anointing for utterance, the anointing for wisdom, the anointing someone connecting you to your seed. God is using you to be a deliverance to people's marriages that are falling apart. The anointing to be a marriage counselor connecting you to your seed. God says he's making a wonder out of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My song is yes. Yes, yes, Lord. In all sufficiency. Yes, yes, Lord. If you're looking for a man, if you're looking for a woman, me, I say yes. Amen. Me, I say yes. My song is yes, Lord. It's yes, yes, Lord. In all sufficiency. Yes, yes, Lord. If you're looking for a man, if you're looking for a vessel, me, I say yes. Amen. Me, I say yes. What is life if I don't live for you? For you, you, you. What is life if I don't shout your praise? Shout your praise. 
what is life if I don't tell you're coming soon? Jesus is coming again. Me, I say yes. Amen, me, I say yes. Oh, my song is yes, Lord. It's yes, yes, Lord. In all sufficiency. Oh, yes, yes, Lord. If you're looking for just a woman, if you're looking for a vessel, me, I say yes. Amen. Me, I say yes. I don't know about you. But me, I say yes. Amen. Me, I say yes. God is making you an evidence that indeed he still blesses people. God is making you a financial giant. God is making you a voice in this generation. I don't know the field that you are in. But I just heard the Holy Spirit tell me there is someone I'm about to use your skills, your gifts and talents and prove to the world that indeed I give people potentials. And through that talent, that ability that God has given you, you are going to win souls. God says what you thought was just something for you to make ends meet. God says he's about to use it as a platform for you to win souls. So God is about to announce someone. God is about to amplify the gifts and the talents of someone and connect you to the right people who will make you go someone oh lazy and i hear the holy spirit say someone you are about to become a world phenomenon i don't know who i'm talking to but who is connecting to it god says he's about to raise someone up with extraordinary wisdom he's about to put solutions in the inside of somebody that wherever you enter, when there is a problem, you prefer the solution. So you are about to be the next big thing because you carry the solutions that people are looking for, that the world is looking for. Someone, God says, I should tell you, you are about to be evidence to the world that he can turn a nobody into a somebody. God says he's about to turn someone's life from a nobody to a somebody. Oh, they called you good for nothing. But God says he's about to tell, lift you up and make them look up to you. That the same people that mocked you are going to come back to you for, for help. They are going to come back to you for help. They are going to come back to you. God is about to use someone to prove to the world that he is the lifter of men. Who am I talking to? Oh, Father, I pray you do all these things that you are saying. No man can do them except you. I connect each and every one that connected by seed. I connect them to their seed and I decree. Whatever has been their desire, Father, don't just bless them, but make them what they have been desiring so they can be a blessing to the world. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you all so much. Everyone that connected by seat on cash up on paper, those are in the description box. Oh, God bless you for your seat. God bless you amazingly. Emily, thank you for joining us, Emily. Osha Robinson, thank you for joining us. And God bless you for your seat. Osha, I've been seeing you. God bless you amazingly for your seat. Caroline, thank you for joining us. Martha, thank you for joining us today. Evelyn, always a pleasure having you. Johan, so glad to have you join us today. Prophetess Angie, always a pleasure having you, woman of God. God bless you. Who else, who else, who else? If I've not mentioned your name, it means you are not commenting. You've got to comment. Shani, thank you for joining us. Shani, you're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Kathy, thank you for joining us, Kathy. I didn't notice you were here. God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, this is a new week. Let me just all, let me just bless your week. I decree this week.
You are blessed in your going out and in your coming back in the and in your coming in in the mighty name of Jesus. This week you shall be favored by God and by man. You will find favor with God and with man this week in the mighty name of Jesus. This week God is giving someone one major testimony. God is giving you a tangible testimony, a tangible miracle this week in the name of Jesus. I hear God says he's about to answer someone's overdue prayer this week. I don't know what you've been trusting God for for so long. This week God is answering that overdue prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone God says I should tell you this week he is about to connect you, give you one right connection that will take your life, your career, your skill, your business, whatever you're doing, God will give you a connection that will take your financial life to the next level. This week, God will open financial doors before someone. This week, you will not hear any bad news. You will not receive any bad news, but you only receive news that will fill your mouth with laughter. Someone this week, God will protect you. God will preserve you. You will not be caught up in an accident. This week, there shall be no loss in your life. You are, you are not permitted to lose your life. You are not permitted to lose someone. You are not permitted to lose anything. This week, what you've not been able to handle. In the first, this week, we are, we are just entering the last days in the first half of the, or, 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 or in the first, half of the year. With this week, God is going to open doors that what you have not been able to handle within this first half of the year, you will handle it within these remaining days of the month in the mighty name of Jesus. This week will be your best week this far in the first half of the year. Hallelujah. And I hear this instruction for someone. Plant a seed for the week. Plant a seed. Connect to, this to, to these prayers, to these declarations for the week by planting a seed. If you feel led like that instruction is for you, then obey. We can never force you to obey an instruction. It's your desire to connect to it by planting a seed that will carry you for the week. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us, family. Last week, our sessions were really obstructed because there was terrible network. We, the network situation was so bad last week that I could not even go live. I remember the last day I tried going live, I ended up just shutting down the session, just ending the session before time because I couldn't. So, but thank God at least we are stable now. We are stable now. So tomorrow, this same time, we are going to be together. Hallelujah. Happy New Week once more, family. God bless you. And if you were joining us for the first time, God bless you amazingly. I've been praying and trusting God for you to join us. Please do subscribe to Purpose and Marie. It a place with Pastor Honoring. This is Pastor Honoring. Do subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. And do not forget that notification bell. For everyone who is a part of the family, God bless you. You are the reason why I come here every day. HD, you're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy New Week to you, family. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.